All right, Alex, I want to talk about how things are changing now. You're at the forefront of investing in a lot of cool companies that are using AI. How do you think the role of the CFO is changing now that there are all these tools out there? Yeah, I mean, the role of the CFO function is changing rapidly. There are certainly some functions like, you know, developers that are evolving faster. Like Cursor has been a complete game changer for software engineers. And we're a little earlier on that trajectory for CFOs, but you can now ask your AI co-pilot, how much are you spending on a certain vendor? Or when does the contract expire? Or please run me this extra sensitivity. Uh, CFOs are expected to be more real-time oriented in, in this age of AI. And with more information at your fingertips, that enables CFOs to be even more strategic than in the past. With AI, a, f- a few important strategic questions have come to the forefront. So one, should we be growing faster now that we have a new AI module? What should our expectations be for retention on that product, gross margins? How should we price our AI solution? And so e- every role is changing with the prevalence of AI and, and the CFO is no different. It's interesting that CFOs, at least it seems, I'm doing a survey on it right now to figure out the truth. Everyone feels like they're behind. And so I'm like, are are we actually? So TBD on that. I do wonder though, like you think we use- The models have gotten a lot better with numbers, you know, over the last few months. And prior to that, it was much more around language. So I do think the CFOs were seeing their colleagues use AI a lot faster, a lot more swiftly. There was the hallucination considerations, but things have gotten a lot better. And so I do think the tools for CFOs are, are, are coming and coming fast. Yeah, it's like, why can't I vibe code this massive sum F? I, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure that all of them are starting to build in AI functions into you know Excel, Google Sheets, where you can effectively prompt what you want to happen in the cell. People, uh, like kind of crap on Excel all the time. Like, oh, why are you still in Excel? But like, I just want to say Excel is like probably the, the best software tool ever created, actually. It, I, I, I definitely agree. And, uh, you know, we're investors in uh, Hebia and George, like he and I bonded our first meeting over our love and admiration for Excel because it is just, it's one of these products that you, it started perhaps in the finance function, but today has permeated like grade schools. It's a completely horizontal tool and just everyone, def- you know, everyone is reliant on it. And when you, th- when you meet like vertical software companies, number one and two, like top competitors are pen and paper and Excel. It's not yeah. like another vertical software company. I love that you uh, pointed that out, that it's, it's often the, the best alternative to anything else out there. And, and people are still trying to replace it. it. It is interesting, though, when you think about, like, will an AI native company in finance be the category leader or will it go to an incumbent? Because I remember when GitHub Copilot came out, it's like, oh, well, they have a ton of users. Like, that makes a ton of sense. Like, their distribution is kind of, it's hooked up from, from the get-go. Excel, like, I guess Microsoft has that example of being able to just use the mil- billions of people that use Excel every day. But then you have other companies that are AI native in the finance space. So I don't really know where the puck is going, but I do find it a fascinating trend of incumbents versus AI native finance companies. Yeah, I mean, we're always thinking about can can the incumbent innovate faster than the startup can get distribution? And to the example you just gave around GitHub Copilot, we've just seen the like mass proliferation of, of Cursor uh, and uh, it, it's been reported, but it's quickly catching up on a revenue scale. And we're talking about a product that's barely more than a year old in commercialization. It is unbelievable wow. how fast these companies can get distribution. Certainly, like engineering is a more an early adopter market than CFOs and maybe the Excel replacement tool. But I do think there's going to be a massive opportunity uh, in financial services to bring these tools to bear for for CFOs. Yeah, I think some of the CFOs got spooked, though, with some of the hallucinations at first. Like, you'd plug something in, and whenever you intuitively know it's wrong, it's like, okay, now I I, I feel like I've been snake bitten here a bit. 
I, I get it, but I, I also think you have to be using these tools. You need to be on the right side of history. And if you're playing around with these tools over the last 12 months, you, you've you come to appreciate how much better and better they're getting. Uh, you know, memory is now becoming a part of ChatGBT and Grok and other tools. And so you, if you commit to playing around with these tools, over time, you're going to see the benefits. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of companies are trying to figure out who picks up what when it comes to advancing an AI agenda. What components do you think the CFO should own? A CFO can be most responsible for pushing how AI is deployed within your company, while a CTO or a chief product officer drives more how AI gets built into your product offering. Toby Ludke is is not a CFO. He's he's the founder and CEO of Shopify. You may have seen his company email that that leaked, but it was amazing on this topic. One of my favorite parts of the memo, before asking for more headcount or resources, teams must demonstrate why they cannot get what they want done using AI. So if you're a CFO and your customer support team wants more headcount to respond to customers, you should absolutely be asking them, have you tried Decagon? Or if your head of engineering wants more headcount, the team better already be leveraging Cursor. It, it's, it comes to this tenacious energy I was talking about earlier. The CFO's job is to ensure financial responsibility. And AI can be a tool for driving efficiency within the company. There was this IT guy I used to work with and inevitably like being an in-office IT guy stinks because everyone just bugs you about stuff like as soon as it happens. And it, it got to a point where he put up this huge sign in front of his desk. So he'd be turned around, you'd walk over and it says, did you file a JIRA ticket yet? And I feel like the office of the CFO should have that. Like when the headcount requests come up, it's like, did you try to solve any of this AI yet? Yeah. Sp- speaking of tickets, one of my favorite examples with Decagon is... Within one month of deployment at Duolingo, they were able to handle and fully resolve 80% of inquiries. So that dramatically reduced ticket volume. And now the human agents just have to focus on the complex inquiries. So I'm 90% sure. So I write on Substack and every once in a while I have a question. I think you're invested we in are, Substack we are. too. But I, I think they use Decagon for the customer support mm-hmm. stuff. And it's like the best customer support ticketing thing ever. Like it, it blows like my Bank of America, uh, like chatbot out of the water. Well, I don't know that Bank of America should be the the baseline, <laughs> but it, it is amazing, and and it's being trusted by. I mean, we just named like consumer examples and Duolingo and Substack, yeah. but it's being used by financial services companies. Like it's being used by Built and Wealth Simple and Chime. So it, it's not just about like consumer companies where hallucinations may be acceptable. It's being used in really high trust, high accuracy scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where the rubber hits the road, right? Like when there's money involved. Totally. Like when I reflect on how AI is being used internally, because there's a lot of noise, a lot of stuff being written about how you increase revenue with AI. But then it's like, if I'm a CFO, How do I get more leverage internally out of it? The two ways, and you can correct me where I go off the rails here, but I think like there are, there are customer support examples or like very, uh, rote examples of like things that happen every single day. Like maybe it's like accounts payable. If you can get it right. If you laid down enough tracks, you can have an AI agent travel upon it that reduces headcount. But the other way is like more efficiencies around like, how do you go faster? And I don't think like you're going to get like a hundred X engineer or a hundred X like financial analyst like this year or anything, but a 30 or 40% like improvement in efficiency. That's a game changer over time. Absolutely. I mean, I, you're, you're right. Customer support is a very common use case. Uh, engineering has been phenomenal marketing. We're seeing some momentum in sales as well. So I think there's like uh, tons and tons of use cases that are happening. I think the, call it calibration or the distinction between 
co-pilot and autopilot yeah. are probably going to happen more in the industries we just named. Whereas like finance tools, probably more on the co-pilot side because there's this element of building trust, accuracy, the CFO must be right, all those types of things. Yeah, I was talking to a founder and they were saying like, our AP tool is 98% correct. I'm like, what about the other 2% though? Like, dude. Absolutely. Run the Numbers is a mostly LLC production. Yelling an intro by Fat Joe. Artwork by some AI thingamajig. Podcast and video editing is done by Cleancast at cleancast.io. Nothing said on this podcast is intended to be business or investment advice. It's the sole opinion of me, a guy who feeds his dog too much ice cream and has a history of net operating losses, lol. If you like this podcast, please hit subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. And also check out MostlyMetrics.com. That's my newsletter where I explore business models and financial metrics. Thanks for riding with me. Share this with your friends. Peace.